and welcome back to the channel in today's video we are going on a little staycation so I've been feeling a little bit down a little bit overworked like I literally grind my ass off it really takes a toll on you because you're putting in like 42 hours a week um, you're coming home and you're exhausted and you're not really allowing any time to yourself and then on your off days you're genuinely just feeling just like an empty tank. You have to do laundry and catch up on things you couldn't do throughout the week because you were at work. Um, it's stressful and it's overwhelming as well as trying to complete your degree and find an internship and there's a lot of shit. You know, I'm still trying to figure out. The best advice I've ever been given for this stage of life I'm going through right now is to focus on the now. And I've been really, really trying to focus on that and trying to stop overthink, but it's really hard because I am an overthinker. That's all I do. I'm like goal oriented. And for me not to overthink is really hard, but the best advice I've received and the best way that I've been able to help myself out of this rut or this like constant exhaustion state of depression and anxiety is take time to yourself such as today I like to spoil myself because whenever you're living alone and you are literally taking care of yourself you have no one else to rely on you don't have an emotional support system you don't have anyone backing up the decisions you make constantly you have to really love yourself for who you are because that's all you have and if you're not spoiling yourself who is you know, if you constantly are working your ass off and you're not getting anything out of it, I feel like it leads to emotional exhaust and that's what I'm feeling. Most of the time I won't spend money on myself for like things, but more recently more than ever I do find like once a month or so I'll go out, I'll take myself out to eat and I'll buy a really nice meal and it'll make me feel good at the end of the day. It is kind of bad to be a materialistic person and I try not to be 100% a materialistic person, but I have to say it's okay to, you know, kind of splurge and kind of throw money if it's gonna get you back into the right state of mind, if it's gonna get me out of the depression and just feeling like I'm doing all of this work for nothing. When in reality, all of it's gonna pay off and I have to tell myself that two alarms are telling me it's time to go. Google, would you kindly, hey Google, <laughs> Hey Google, would you kindly shut the fuck up? Okay, enough talking. We're gonna get dressed and we're going to Chicago, okay? Let's go. things but it's never going to go to a T no matter what the plan is 
it's more so about how you achieve it and then once you get there are you even at nirvana but when i say nirvana in a sense i'm literally referring to happiness the ultimate destination of peace and bliss but it's kind of like a buddhist type term um, there might be some people that are buddhist i don't know any people in particular that i'm friends with or acquaintances with that is Buddhist, but I, I find it really intriguing and I like to learn about it. I like to learn about things like that. It is, it is really scary. And when I think of the number one thing that fears me the most in this world is feeling like I can't grow anymore. The whole idea of life is to go through new experiences and grow from them and come out a bigger and better person and be able to achieve more because of the experiences you went through and allow yourself to become the best human being you possibly can from going through certain scenarios and going through shit and coming out the other end. I don't know. I want to know anyone else's opinion. Do you fear that there is no road that leads to nirvana? Because that is the number one fear that I think I have in my 20s right now. Is it's not really the fear of death. I mean, kind of, yes, I do fear that. I fear death in a sense. I fear the idea that I won't be able to fulfill everything I want to fulfill and accomplish the things that I want to accomplish as a human being before I go out. But it's not something that sits with me daily and I don't wake up and I'm like, oh, I might die today. Oh, I might I might get in a car crash. Oh, I might get hit by a bus today. Oh, I might get stabbed in the throat by some random pedestrian on my way to work, you know? It's not something that constantly sits with me, but the one thing that sits with me 24-7 recently, this past year, the fear of stagnation, the fear of getting to a point that I don't know what to do with my life anymore really scares the hell out of me. It honestly does. And the only way I know how to combat it is to focus on now. That's why I'm taking the spontaneous trip to Chicago is I get into this rut and I get into this anxiety and I get into this depression and I'm just like, what if I don't ever get this degree? What if this internship doesn't even help me get an actual fulfilling career? And then what if I get a career in the industry to get my years experience where I can go and work at Netflix or a company that I really want to work for? And it be not good enough. What if I'm sitting there at a job and I'm doing a marketing job or I'm doing a commercial work job or I'm filming weddings and I realize that this passion isn't really sitting well with me anymore because it's not what I want to do. Is it going to scare me away from the idea of getting to where I want to get because I'm sitting in this job that I'm not really liking and I, I would rather have an office job and I would rather have like reassurance that I have a gig after what I'm doing? I don't know, and that scares me. It scares me to think that one day I might just wake up and be like, fuck the degree. Hurt staying in the food industry. But, and I think my mind is just going in circles and that's why I kind of need a way. I need to step back and I need to realize that I don't need to be so focused on trying to figure out where I want to go. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. I just have to strive after new experiences and I can't be so worried about the future. I need to be present now and I'm not present now. I think I'm present in the sense that I constantly wake up and I go to work and I constantly work my ass off at that job, but it just doesn't sit right with me because when I come home, am I really happy? I need some time away from the constant reality of a ritual, of a lifestyle, and being able to sit with myself and be content with myself and be happy with myself and not have to rely on anyone else. dumb thing I made about Chicago is they're like one of the only states I've driven through in a while. It still makes you pay for the toll with, with, with only cash. I just picked up two quarters off the ground I could have used. I could have used the two quarters I got off the ground, but I, I mean, that's technically stealing, but I'm using it too on the way back. <laughs> I'm such a terrible human being. I don't have quarters, okay? Like, I have money on a card, but not, I don't know. I'm done.
made it to the hotel. I've already changed. I took a quick shower just because I was sweating so much because I was wearing a hoodie. It's actually really warm here. Um, so this is the room. It looks like a tragedy because I literally already have all our stuff all over the place. Um, small little cute bathroom. The best part I really like is this thing on the wall. It has like giant dispensers of body wash, shampoo, conditioner. They have like a mini bar fridge if you wanted to add it to your room. A desk, a mirror. It's just very old timey, very simplistic with a king size bed. But yeah, I'm gonna go try to get something to eat really quick. My spa appointment isn't until 6.30 tonight. I'll probably leave at like 5, 5.30, just where I can find parking and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take Benji with me. Say hello. We're gonna go shake shack. You wanna go shake shack? He says, I don't know what shake shack is, mom. Plain hamburger, chocolate milkshake with cheese fries. Walked to Shake Shack and we're back in the hotel. This is called the Palmer Hotel. It's a Hilton specialty. It's like a historic older hotel. It's beautiful. They have like this grand piano right here. I'm in love. I don't normally like older things. They normally spook me out. Historic things, knowing that like how old it is. But um, it is beautiful, I have to say. I don't have my vlog camera on me, so I'm doing this on my phone, but it's just not doing the place justice, just how beautiful it really is. Benjamin, you don't have to get on those. All the like light fixtures. And the paintings. I did actually book a spa appointment later today, but it's not this spa in particular i'm a little upset about it but the palmer house spa actually isn't open on tuesdays and wednesdays which are the days that i am here for so i had to go to another equivalent to the experience spa that's like about a six minute drive from here we're a 20 minute walk i'll definitely be doing the six minute drive for sure well i came to check out the pool really quick just to see what i'm getting myself into for later tonight they close at 9, so I'll probably come down here until 9. So I don't know if I'll get out at like 7. They'll probably have give me enough time to swim in the pool. The only thing is I want to go out for like a small meal and alcohol. I just don't know if I'm allowed to bring alcohol in here with me. But it's so pretty. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the pool, and then it has the paintings on the wall. They also have these like lounge chairs, which is like... Kind of phenomenal the detail and then over here we have like the towel racks it feels like a sauna in here though like i'm dying of a heat stroke it feels like summer i think they did that on purpose though um because i'm sure the pool is pretty cold driving in chicago is literally the worst thing ever it is so freaking pretty but it takes you like 20 minutes just to park like if you're going anywhere and you have to drive to it, you better like plan way ahead because you cannot find parking to save your life. Because most of these parking garages are like super full or there's like no lots available. I don't know, it's intense. And valet parking is intense too because it's expensive as fuck. Um, yeah, but it's super pretty. I love all these apartment complexes right here. If only I wanted to stay down here. I have to say this hotel is definitely more fancy than um, the one I'm staying. Um, I got my valet ticket and we're going to the spa. I'm scared. Good morning, 
morning, guys. It's Taylor. It's, we successfully did a night at the Palmer House Hotel in Chicago. I feel really relaxed after my whole spa day. I don't really know if I would recommend the hot stone massage. I don't know if it was just like the practitioner or whatever you want to call her. But I will recommend the facility highly. I do think that like a regular back massage, I would have been like 100% more happier, like the signature massage or something. Um, but I feel relaxed. I love the steam room. I loved the details inside of the spa itself. I don't really know if I'm going to be able to use this clip because I literally am not wearing pants right now. I don't want to be demonetized, but like I'm also in a rush because the checkout time for this hotel is 11 and I want to go get food and I can't do that with Benjamin down here. I don't know what clips I've gathered so far from just talking about my experience in Chicago. Breakfast was amazing. I actually took a little video to show you what it looks like. It's a banana nut bread french toast. I do have to say my experience with Chicago is I wish I could have stayed longer and got the most out of it. I did go get food at this Italian restaurant across the street from the Peninsula Hotel. It's called Rosebud. I believe it's Italian owned. Got the chicken fettuccine alfredo. Tasted amazing. Got my food to go because I was going to have a relaxing day at my hotel. And I had to wait for my food for 20 minutes. I wasn't going to like stand outside and I wasn't going to stand in the doorway. So I sat at the bar and drank my wine waiting for my food. It took like 20, 25 minutes and then my food got ready and then I ran into a guy at the bar. Oh my god. <laughs> I had no plan on meeting anyone. I wanted to have like a staycation. I wanted to get away from life. It wasn't really like I could easily go to a bar in Grand Rapids and try to run into someone. That was my intent, you know? So we went to a 7 Eleven. We got some drinks. Uh, I don't regret my decision in hooking up with the dude, but it wasn't my intent, you know? Like, I didn't go there wanting to find someone. I didn't go. I don't know. Yeah, but it was fun. It was fun. Not the night I anticipated, but you know, when life throws a curveball at you, you gotta go with it. You gotta swing the bat anyway.